Hi, and thanks so much for joining me. Today we are featuring the Eyes of a Star palette by Charlotte Tilbury. If you'd like to see that, please keep watching. And the third palette finally came in, the Hollywood Flawless Eye Filter Luxury Palette. And this is the shade Eyes of a Star. And again, consistent with the other packaging. We've got the other ones here. I will compare them all at the end with swatches, but let's look at this one first. This one has some really beautiful shades in it. So let's go ahead and swatch it. We've got our four shades here. One is the Prime, two Enhance, three Smoke, and four Define. The first two look a bit more shimmery than the other two. The other two look more satiny, but we'll see what that looks like when we go to try on. But let's go ahead and put a look together. I do want to start using the meteorites a little bit more. So I actually had a combination of the medium and the golden. So that was this right here. I did a little custom mixing and then I took what was left of the golden as well. So I just wanted to kind of go over the perimeter and just soften up the bronzer a little bit. Not that the bronzer needs softening, but I thought I would try it that way. Okay, so let's go ahead with the palette. Let's take this shade first. Okay, I'm just gonna go really light without that one. Is it more of a wash of color? But let's go in with the next color, number two, Enhance. And I'm going to place this, actually, I think this works better using my finger. So I'm just gonna apply it right on the lid. I think this is a really beautiful shade. It's a warmer coppery color. I'm gonna go a bit light-handed here just because I think these are really beautiful with a light hand. At least that's the way I like to use them. Looks like you can build this up as well if you want to, but I'm gonna leave it right here. So now we have both shades, one and two. We'll go in with the enhanced color and let's put that in the crease and see, see how it looks. <laughs> now this one's a nice, really nice warm brown color. And it seems to be applying really evenly. Yeah, that's what I think I like about these palettes is that they're really easy to use. Still sheer though at the same time. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead in with this deepest shade here and just fill that outer corner. With these more recent palettes in general, I've noticed that the deeper shades are a little bit more dense, um, but also I feel like it's easier to work with them that way. I'm going to go ahead in with this number two color and then just go right under the eye with that. Let's see how that looks. I'm going to go in with number um, three on the outer corner. I'm going to tight line here with Earth. So for those of you who don't love mascara, I thought I would complete the look first and then I'll add mascara just so you can see what that looks like. I did pull three blushes from Chanel because I like building up blushes. Let's start with 440 because that'll put down a nice base of color and also um, allow me to add color to this front part because it doesn't have that shimmer. Really lightly. Okay, just a little bit of color. Then I thought because this is a more warm, bronzy kind of eye, I'd go in with Evening Beige, and this has much more shimmer in it. It's got like a golden tone to it, so we can go in with that as well. 
I just want to focus it here and outwards though because of the potential for it to exaggerate any kind of texture I might have, which to me is pores. I'm just gonna buff that in a little, that was a lot. That's why I love this brush to the Shantikai one, because you can definitely use it to buff. I always apply the hummingbird powder with it, but you can do this as well. I'm gonna go in with Jersey here, just as kind of a wash of color to pull these two together. This is not necessary, I just enjoy this, so <laughs> this is how I will apply blush when I have time. But yeah, there's a really beautiful sheen to that. But again, avoiding the front. For lips, I thought we would try the Chantecai Contour Fill. I'm just gonna put it all over my lips because I have lots of lines just in general. Comfortable, not quite balmy. It's not that kind of emollient um, feeling, but it's very smooth. Going with Glowing Gen. So in terms of the lip contour I just put on, it just went on really smoothly. Um, that's a really nice lipstick anyway, but it just made it a little bit smoother. Let's just go in with Pillow Talk in the center. And then let's go in with Stellar Gloss 629, again, right in the center. Next, we're gonna take a little bit of this Balm by Chanel in Rosé. So it has that balmy texture, so use it as a very gentle highlighter. So for those of you who like no mascara and just tight lining, this is really nice and minimal. I think the colors blend so easily, which makes this easier to wear without mascara. I am going to go in with a light mascara. This is the Ilia. Um, I do have the Charlotte Tilbury, which we can go with, with a, which we can go in, wow, which we can go in with in a moment here, but let's go in with the Ilia first. This is a really natural looking mascara as well as being a clean beauty brand. If you wanna see every single one of your lashes, this one will do that. It doesn't really build volume per se for me, but it really does separate and gives a little bit of length. So there is the Ilia mascara. So this is one coat of the Ilia. It's not a fast mascara to use. It takes a little bit of work if you want that no makeup makeup look. But in general, I think no makeup makeup actually takes me longer to do. I do wanna build this outer part just a little bit more and see where we can go though before we add a little bit more liner. And let's take this third color. I'm gonna take this one right here and just kind of build this outer V. And let me take this Sonia G brush. I'm gonna take that first color and go in the inner corner. Yeah, this one's really sheer. I don't know if you can see from there, but these just fade into each other, which is what I like about these palettes. I'm gonna take that third color again and just build it with this now, just to make it a little bit softer. Jasper here, it's a warm, shimmery brown. So I think that'll look really nice. Okay, and then let's go above the lash line as well. Just on the outer third. Okay, I did find an angled brush, just so I can pull this a little bit so it makes more of a tapered end. Remember if your angle is off here and it needs to go either or higher. So if you make a mistake and put this angle too low, you can always go in with concealer and fix, which is what I'll do in a moment. Okay, so just a very like subtle lift to the eye with that eyeliner. So this eyeliner is not even that intense. Again, it's got some shimmer to it, but it builds that lift just because of the shape. And then this side of it, it's a sponger, but I'm gonna use it to just kind of smooth this whole thing out. It's like a, a round, it kind of looks like an eraser. This is an It Cosmetics brush that I've had forever. I just found it again. I don't even know if it's still available, but if it is, I will link it below. And actually, I just wanna add a little bit of this number three here to that area right here. I'm gonna use that same brush just to dot it right there. Got my Clay to Poe concealer. I'm gonna clean that up. Here's that, so if you wanna add a little bit more eyeliner, and I actually didn't add so much. 
I just added it right here to like the outer third and then also in the waterline. Um, but we're gonna go in with more mascara. So I'm going to use the Charlotte Tilbury. This is the Push Up Lashes. And this one builds really fast. So you get a quick result, but it does start to smudge after a few hours. So I go in with the flat side first. Okay, so that's the difference when you go in with a lot of lashes. Then for bottom lashes, I do prefer the Chantecaille. It just grabs them so much better, especially with such wispy lashes. Let's go ahead and talk about this palette. I wasn't sure what to expect because I couldn't really decipher what the colors were when I looked at it online. I think the colors worked really beautifully and I liked going in with a light hand. I think with these palettes that might be what's worked well for me is that I haven't tried to really load them up with color and keeping them sheer layering gradually. And I think that's why I enjoy these so much is because they don't actually add a lot of color really quickly because for me, that requires more blending. These don't require that level of blending for me. If I build slowly, that blending is almost not necessary. I just did a little bit of back and forth. I do think this is a beautiful palette. Now let's talk about all three shades together. I'm gonna to show you the three shades close up side by side with Eyes of a Star, Star Aura, and then we have Diva Lights. So you can see how different they are and you can see the differences in warmth versus cool. And I'm going to show you some swatches of them all side by side with the colors one, two, three, and four in order. So you can see those. I did also notice that even though Eyes of a Star and Diva Lights look similar, I'll show you them next to each other as well. They are not that similar. In fact, if you look at the swatches, the number two shade on the Eyes of a Star is much more of a coppery shade. And in the number two on Diva Lights, it's more of a rose gold shade. So I hope that helps. If you're going to ask me though, which one is my favorite one? That's a really hard question. The one though I find myself still wanting to play with a little bit more than any of the other ones, and I don't know why, maybe it's because it's different than a lot of things I have, is the Star Aura. It is a cooler palette compared to the other two. Again, I think they all perform beautifully, so I don't have an issue with their performance. Just thinking in terms of what I'm liking, especially with spring coming up, I'm liking the sheer wash of color. I like how this is a very light, soft palette. Um, nothing against, again, the other palettes. I will, of course, use them, but this one reminds me more of fall, actually, than this one reminds me of spring. This one's a little bit less seasonal looking to me, but I do want to play with this one a little bit more and see what I can do with it. I wanna do a really soft look with it. Um, maybe try something with just one coat of mascara and tight lining. I think that might be really pretty. Also, I did notice that this one, the eyes of a star looks very similar to this one, the Desert Haze palette. I mean, this one's totally matte, but just if you look at the colors, they look kind of similar. No, just me, I don't know. <laughs> um, let's swatch them, I'll swatch them here for you really quickly so we can see. Oh, while I'm swatching this, I did contact Charlotte Tilbury um, asking them about the difference in price from these palettes versus their other palettes. I did actually send them pictures of the stickers on the palettes, the new ones, and also um, the existing ones, like this one is four grams. So I realized that their palettes range anywhere from four to five to 5.2 grams. So I did send that to them and I have not heard back yet. So it's been about, oh, I'm gonna say a week. Let me just check my email and make sure I didn't hear anything back. The last time I heard from them was December 30th. I don't know where they are with that, but they definitely know there are questions now about the palette quantity versus the price and that the price is the same, but the quantity is different. Um, I also did send them a link to the video where the original questions were so they could look at that. If and when I do hear from them though, I will put the information down below regarding any justification or rationale for the same pricing with a difference in the actual quantity of product. Me personally, I never go through palettes, I think, <laughs> eyeshadow palettes at least, maybe powders, I will go through all the way to pan to repurchase. Eyeshadow palettes though, I can't actually recall ever doing that. 
So for me, it doesn't matter as much, but I think for transparency's sake, that is important. Here is Desert Haze, and this is Eyes of a Star. So you can see the difference there. So if you have the Desert Haze and you were kind of wondering if it looked similar, so you can get a reference on if you'd like these shades or not, that is the difference. I know that many of you were waiting to see the third one before making a choice, so now I'm curious, which one would you choose? Would you choose one or more or all or none? I'm just really curious, but that is it for today's video. So please take care of each other, stay well. If you enjoyed this video, if you learned something, please give it a thumbs up, subscribe, and I will see you next time. This is a little bit trickier than it looks to hold up three pellets. Okay, here's the side. What are you doing? So here we have, what is happening with this? Why is this so hard? <laughs> oh my gosh. Ah! Uh, okay, maybe. Oh.